Hi guys, welcome back to Hospitality Engineering. Today we will continue Centrifugal Pump Module 2, Part 11. First we start with the introduction. This kind of pumps based on centrifugal force as the fluid being pumped enter the inlet or central section of the pump. You can see here, this is a central portion. In this impeller, impeller is rotating here. The water enter center portion of this impeller. Because of the speed is faster at the outer edge of the impeller. Momentum increases as more fluid movement is admitted to the pump section, more fluid movement is built up in the casing that encloses the impeller. The build up is forced out of the pump discharge port. Now we will see advantages and disadvantages of centrifugal pump. Advantages of centrifugal pump. It's cheap comparing with other pumps because it is small. Easy to disassemble and reassemble the pump. Rotates quietly comparing to other pumps. Steady pressures and flow. The disadvantage of centrifugal pump, most of them require priming, no metering, don't deal with high viscosity liquid, low head. Now we will see main parts of centrifugal pump. You can see in the pictures, the, some of the main parts are impeller, casing, bearing, coupling, mechanical seals and clamp packing, inlet, bearing, discharge and section head. Any centrifugal pump Regardless of whether it is single or multi-stage, tends to have the same type of components. This components includes an impeller, impeller and casing wear ring, a drive shaft which is often protected at critical points with shaft sleeves, bearings, packing box or mechanical seal and a casing. Here the parts can be divided into three types stationary parts, rotating parts and parts which half stationary and half rotate. Stationary parts. Casing is stationary. Casing with the rings also stationary parts. Rotating parts. Obviously shaft, shaft sleeves, impeller, impeller wear rings are rotating parts. If you see here, we can easily understand parts which are stationary and half stationary. Mechanical seal and bearings. These both are parts which half stationary and half rotary. Impellers. The impeller is the heart of the centrifugal pump. It is the part that applies high energy force to fluid to give it velocity and momentum. There are many Different types of impeller, each type especially suited to a particular pumping job. The types of that are most widely used is open impeller, semi open impeller, closed impeller. You can see the parts of the impellers in this picture. At the top impeller tip, here you can see this is a impeller vein, impeller eyes. The center portion is called impeller eyes. Impeller wear rings. Shaft. Shaft are made of steel or other corrosive resistance metal. Corrosive resistance metal are used because of the high price spent when replacing the shaft. Instead of doing repeated replacement of the shaft, it is better to have high quality shaft at the beginning to avoid the continuous wastage of the money. If you see the parts of the shaft in this picture, is impeller, here keys and keyway and shaft. These are very important for the 
you are fitter to understand this pumps before he disassemble or assemble the pump shaft sleeves on larger centrifugal pump a replaceable sleeve is slipped over the pump shaft to protect it from corrosion or wear notably at those point where the shaft comes in contact with other parts of the pump here you can see again the parts impeller the shaft sleeve shaft kc the enclosures surrounding the pump impeller shaft and packing clamp it directs the flow of liquid into and out of the pump usually casing or valute double valute or diffuser type so it can reduce the speed and organize the fluid to change the speed energy to pressure energy casing materials are depends on the media you can see in this picture casing casing type there are three types of casing one is valute casing you can see here it looks like valute so it implies that names the second one is double valute casing you can see the the shape looks like double so it it is called double valute casing diffuser it has both side the water passes through it so this is called the diffuser type casing seal there are two types of seals one packing and mechanical seals which are the main function is to seal the fluid around the shaft to flow outside the casing you can see here this picture would illustrate how to dismantle the pump easily seals packing is the special packed box around the shaft to seal the fluid and it's consist of graphite based of teflon depends upon the fluid and the temperature the packing assembled inside the box as rings around the shaft and in between there is a latten ring for the cooling mechanical seals it has the same application for the packing but with more advantages such as long life deals with high pressure and temperature better sealing ability environmental friendly the pictures are self explanatory bearing the drive shaft of the centrifugal pump is supported and aligned with the shaft bearing the shaft bearing not only allow the shaft to rotate with a minimum of friction but also prevent the shaft from moving along its own axis or its radius that means axial motions or radial motions controlled by the bearings you can see here bearings in these pictures also lubrication ring you can see bearing housing this entire things called bearing housing wear rings most enclosed impellers are equipped with wear rings the purpose of wear rings is to prevent the internal leakage between the discharge and the section sides of the impellers while at the same time protecting both the impeller and the casing from wear under the normal operations the impeller and the casing bearings are lubricated by a flip of the liquid being pumped troubleshooting now we come to the interesting parts which is essential for the each technicians engineer involved in this industries if pump is not turning so what are the causes first you check driver not running which is your driver your driver is a motor check the motor then your motor is coupled with the pump through the key whether this key is sheared or check the drive belt slip your belt has enough tightness and check the coupling fault sometime coupling may be loose it it will not coupled with the properly with the motor fully then shaft or gear sheared action required first for the electrical side check the fuse circuit breaker in case if anything trip reset or find out the fault before reset then if a gear is sheared replace it drive belt is if you have the enough tightness then fine otherwise adjust it 
coupling fault. Check if the sleeping are broken, replace it if necessary. In case of the shaft or gear shared, check or replace it. Pump not priming. First, check the inlet valve. In case if inlet valve is closed, then open the valve. Inlet restricted. While you are checking the inlet, if it get clocked or restricted with the, some depresses, check and clear it. Air leakages on the section side. Replace the seal. Check the line and bore with the water and remove the air from the section side. Liquid draining or siphons from the system. Fit checks the foot wall. In case of the any leakages, first correct the foot wall with gasket, then again fill the water, then start the pump. Own pump impeller. Inspect, increase the pump speed might also help. Also, fitting the foot wall. Most of the time, the foot wall is the main reason and airlock also the causes. So, check these two things before you attempting the major things. Pump vibrates. Misalignments, foundations not sufficiently right, impeller partially clocked, causing imbalances, mechanical defect, shaft bend, rotating element bend, wound bearings, vaporizing in section, excessive capacity, section strainer block. These are the major reason for the pump. Pump not discharging. First, leak of the prime. Open all the vent to release the trapped air and fill the pump section pipe completely with liquid. Excessive section lift. Check the pump inlet for clocking etc. causing the excessive friction head or check the section head. Excessive discharge head. Check that walls are open. Check piping for the obstructions or blockages. Check the total head. Speed to low. Check that the pump Revolutions per minute or RPM is constant with the manufacturer recommendation. Pump clock. Check that impeller is not clocked. Wrong direction of the rotation. Check that pump is running in the correct direction. Vapor lock. Check that section pipe is properly submerged. Relief valve not properly adjust. Check, adjust. Check for the dirt on the valve sheet. Air leak. Check seals. Check the lines for the any leakages. If you see this troubleshooting, major cause of the pump not operating is air lock or your section side clockages or if you see any kind of electrical failures. So first try to attempt the easiest things then move step by step to short out the troubleshooting method. Types of centrifugal pump. Single stage pump, single stage double action pump, vertical pump, multi stage pump, sun time pump, submergible pump. Now we will see one by one in picture. Single stage pump. You can see here what do you mean single stage pump? There is a only one impeller is there. This impeller inside the casing. This, if we have the only one impeller, this is called the single stage pump. This pump is easy to maintain. You can see here, simply you can fix this motor along with the pump and mount on the frame. The frame, you can see between the frame bolt and the nuts are there. In between the seams are there to make the alignment. In this pump, easily by vernier dial test indicator, we can make the alignment of the single stage pump. Usually, the single stage pump is very easy to maintain and handle it. Single stage double action pump. You can see here, this is a single stage double action pump. Vertical inline pump. The impeller is in vertical, so this is called the vertical inline pumps. Multi stage pump. Instead of the single impeller, just imagine the number of the impellers are arranged together on the same casing. So, based on the impeller number 1, 2, 3, 4. So, if it is a 4, it is called the 4 stage pump. Sun time pump. 2 stage submersible pump. Thanks for watching. Now, we have come to the end of the section. I hope you have subscribed our channel. If not, please subscribe. And also, share with the, your engineering team 
as well as the engineering student. If you have any feedback, please write an email to us. Thank you for watching.